Hi there, I'm Jamie Dunbar, and welcome back to the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. This is day one, video three. The first few weeks with your puppy are so important, we are breaking each day down into multiple videos. If you enjoy what you see here, please check out DunbarAcademy.com to learn more. If you're interested in real-time, live online puppy classes, check out SeriousPup.com. We'll provide links to both of these websites in the description below. In our last video, I put Daisy into her crate with a foodstuff chew toy, then I shut the door, but I stayed nearby to comfort her until she settled down. In this video, I'm going to take her to the potty. This is one of the main reasons crate training is so useful. By confining Daisy to her crate, we make it very unlikely that she's going to pee or poop. Dogs instinctively don't want to pee or poop when they are in a confined space, like a crate, and even an eight-week-old puppy can hold it for at least an hour. After one hour, when you release your puppy from their crate, there is a good chance that they are going to need to pee or poop. So it's the perfect time to take them to their potty. Then if they pee or poop in their potty, you can reward them for doing the right thing in the right place. Toilet training is all about preventing mistakes and rewarding your pup when they pee or poop in the right place. If we reward our pup for using their potty, they'll want to save their pee and poop to cash in for rewards at their potty. So, after your pup has been in their crate for one hour, take them out and carry them directly to their potty so they don't have a chance to pee or poop on the way there. When you get to their potty, put them down and wait for two minutes. If they don't pee or poop after two minutes, just pick them back up, put them back in their crate, and set a timer for another 20 or 30 minutes to try again. As with before, stay near your pup to comfort them until they settle, and be sure to praise and reward them when they are settled. If when you take your pup to their potty, they pee or poop, praise them gently when they are going, then reward them with multiple high value food treats, enthusiastic praise, and maybe even a play session if you have some free time. This is now the perfect time to play with your pup indoors because they are less likely to have a house soiling mistake since they just went in their potty. Keep the play session relatively short, 15 minutes is perfect, and supervise your puppy closely the entire time. Literally. Don't leave your pup unsupervised for a second. If you can't supervise them, put them back in their crate. That's what it's for. If your pup is out and about and you see them starting to pee or poop, shout outside, scoop your pup up and take them to their potty immediately. If they use their potty, reward them. If they pee or poop while you are not paying attention, there's nothing to be done except clean it up and resolve to do a better job supervising them next time. Anytime you can't supervise your pup closely, put them in their crate. If you play with your pup after a successful trip to their potty, keep the play session to just 15 minutes or maybe 20 minutes at most. They may not seem tired, but if you put them back in their crate with a foodstuff chew toy and then you stay nearby to comfort them, they should settle down. So that's how it's supposed to work. Let's give it a try. All right, Daisy's been inside her crate now, taking a nap for the past hour and uh, my timer went off. So it's time to take her to the potty. I'm gonna try and put her on leash for this one. So uh, she'll be in a kind of restricted area where I want her to pee and poop. So let's give it a shot. Hey Daisy, we're gonna go outside and we are going to use the potty. So yeah, we're gonna, come here. I'm gonna put you on leash. Then I'm gonna pick you up. And I'm gonna go straight to the potty. No stops anywhere else. Don't want to give her any chance to go pee. Oh, yep. Here we go. Okay, Daisy, this is where I want you to go potty. Little puppy stretch. Little puppy sniff. We're gonna stay over here. So this is uh, Daisy's first experience with the leash and the collar. So it might be a bit of a distraction. Let's see, Daisy, what do you think about right here? A little sniff. Oh no. No, thank you. Oh, 
going to wait here for a minute or two. Doesn't seem like she terribly needs to pee, but it is also a bit of a distraction with the leash. This is where uh, this is where having a an X Pen set up outside can be a really good toilet situation for a young puppy because she hasn't really gotten used to the leash, and we don't really want this to be her first experience with it. So I'm going to take the leash off now, and we'll see if she goes pee. And we might think about setting up an X Pen out here to be a better toilet opportunity for her. Give, it a, give her a minute or two. Oh, yeah, maybe a little water. Help get things going. Oh, you a little cold? Your back leg's shivering a little bit. It's a little windy out here. Give her another 30 seconds, and then we'll just go inside, put her back in the crate, and we'll try again in half an hour. If she doesn't pee now, that's fine. We know she's gonna pee eventually. As you can see, she's not super comfortable in her collar yet. So we're gonna do some more desensitization around the collar. Just doing some sniffing. That could be a sign. Think about peeing. And I think we're going to call it and we'll go back inside for now. I'm going to put my treats back over here. These are kind of my outdoor toilet treats. And I'm going to go back inside, put her in the crate, and we'll try again later. Oh, are you a little cold? Yeah, it's a little chilly out here. All right. That's okay. Daisy, we'll try again later. We'll just go back in our crate and settle down for a little bit. And I'll set my timer for 20 minutes and we'll try again in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, we ran into a little bit of trouble with the leash. Even with the leash off, Daisy didn't go pee, which is totally fine. So we put her back in her crate to try again 20 minutes later. Here is our next trip to the potty. Here you go, Daisy. All right, we're gonna call it. As you saw, Daisy did another sniff around the yard, played with some more grass, but did not go pee. So we put her back into her crate, set the timer for another 20 minutes to try again. Here is our next trip to the potty. Yeah, this is our little potty spot right here. Woo, what do you think? A little stretch. I know, we, we put on a leash because we want you to stay here. We don't want you to go exploring everywhere. Oh, don't worry about that. Here. I know, it's a little weird. We're gonna do some training about the leash inside. Okay, okay, okay. There, we'll take it off. Are you gonna go pee?
a big stretch though. That looked like you were thinking about peeing. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Way to go. Yes, Daisy, here you go. Yes, there's a treat. Oh, I'm so proud of you. That one, one treat. Here's another one, Daisy. Daisy, Daisy. Daisy, do you want more? You don't want more treats? Yeah, that was so good. That was so good, you went pee. Good girl, yes, good job. Good job. Here, you want another one? I know it takes you a little while to chew, but I'm just so happy with what you did. Good job. Yay! Yay, yes, here's another one. Here's another one. Yeah, that's the jackpot. All right, we got her peeing and we gave her some treats and we celebrated. Woo woo! Now we can go inside and do some more training. Yes, I know, we're actually gonna do some work with your leash. And we're gonna show you, the leash is not what we play with. The chew toys, the tug toys is what we play with. Yay! Good job, Daisy. All right, success. We got her to pee outside and we rewarded her. It took a little longer than expected and I think we're going to have to do some troubleshooting around the leash, but not bad for day one. I'm very curious to hear what our experts have to say about my experience taking Daisy to the potty. Hello, puppy experts. Ian and Kelly, good to see I you as you. always. Okay, so now you've watched video number three where I try and take Daisy to the potty for the first time. And I'm curious, what do you think? What went well, what went wrong? What should I do differently? Kelly, let's start with you this time. Okay, um, there's several points here. I think we could we can make some improvement. Um, and I'm gonna leave some to Ian that I know he's going to address. I uh, so uh, I'll, I'm gonna start with um, the leash. The I had leash questions about and the leash. management yeah. at potty time. Yeah. Um, I would initially, I mean, if sometimes you need a leash because some people are gonna be in an area. I mean, ideally, you have a, a safe place for your puppy, no matter where you live, that you can um, have them off leash for potty. I would prefer at this age to set up a pen an outdoor X pen mm -hmm. in the toilet area so that they're going in the right area that you, the, there you want them to go in because you have a, you have a one, not a one shot chance, but a much easier chance right now. Your puppy is a blank slate, your yard or, or a little alcove in your condo building, you know, association, wherever you're going to use for the toilet. This is your chance to get your puppy to target one area rather than your whole garden or whatever it may be. And I know some people live in apartments or maybe they don't have a, a balcony. These are troubleshooting things you'll talk about later. But in general, if you can pick out a toilet area that is outdoors and pen it with one or two X-pens, depending on the size of your puppy, and, and, and not do the leash thing right then, right there, um, it'd be better. I would separate out in leash introduction from potty, early potty training initially at this very early stage. So um, we, we can talk about leash training or not. I'll let you decide whether that's something you want to talk about in this video or if this is more just the potty training. And in that case, my only, my only comment would be don't necessarily leash your puppy if you can pen them. And if you have to leash your puppy, use a lighter leash. That was a very thick rope for a tiny baby. Uh, you know, um, they have, you, know, you get a puppy a cheap, tiny, thin uh, nylon leash and collar that you, know, you use for this. So there's nothing weighing and dragging them around. And um, I would still train leash training inside separately from potty as much as, po as, much as possible so that those two things aren't going together at the, at the beginning. That makes a ton of sense to me after, after trying, trying to do the uh, first toilet trip <laughs> on leash. 
But uh, unleash, have, uh, on like, on like you want to add? On, oh. a, on a rope that could like hold a yacht. I don't know, it was very <laughs> thick for a little puppy. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's my fault though. You asked me what kind of leash and I did not say specifically. Well, you know, I went to I went to uh, Pet Food Express, and I think they were out of stock of their lightest leash. And so I was I was there with my daughter, and I was like, okay, we want the lightest leash we can find. I was like, oh, these neither of these look very light. And so yeah, I might I might have to go online um, and order something thinner. But yeah, go to a different store. There's tiny little you know thin, yeah, like quarter inch nylon leashes, quarter inch width. And so yeah, I've I have since that video done a little leash work with her and so or you know tried to separate those two processes separate the toilet training and the leash um so yeah in in another video we can talk more about that and i'm sure i make some more mistakes there too there's another Uh, big mistake that i think ian can uh, ian's gonna i can i can bet what he's gonna say what was your what was this you'll never know well i'm totally in agreement with you with the x pen And I would run the puppy there like, uh, oh, let's go pee, let's go pee in the toilet. And then say, in your toilet, put the puppy down. And she pees, treat and so on. Um, Why? I don't want the puppy investigating parts of the yard before he goes pee, because that's going to take a lot of time. And that time will get longer and longer as he gets older. I want the dog to know you go to your pee area, you pee. If you don't pee back in the crate, which he did. So I was really happy the puppy didn't pee the first time. And I thought, great, let's see if Jamie just plops him straight in the crate, try try it again. Um, But then when the pup is investigating the yard, um, I, um, oh, what was I gonna say? God, my brain just went absolutely blank. Um, Can I say something really quick? Yes. It's a girl. The the, girl. Daisy, Daisy the little lady. California guy. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. So when the pup is investigating the yard, I want it to investigate the yard and not pee and poop on it. You know, there's a yard and only one part of it is a tiny toilet. And when we go outside and we give you the cue, go pee, go pee, and we do it quickly. Um, again, the leash training, oh, done indoors before we even think of joining that up with house training. There's so much you can do inside with putting on the collar, which I would do from underneath so I can buckle it on top so I can see that it's secure. Then I would pull it round, fasten the leash and do the leash training indoors. Um, The one I think (laughs) criticism I had um, was when the puppy peed it, I mean, it's like you lost it. You turned into this squeaky, And oh my word, no. I mean, I know the puppy only took one treat and then took off on you, so that we would practice sit, treat, 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 treat. But I would praise the puppy in a normal voice. I mean, this is something where men will be looking at this and say, Well, I'm not doing that. Uh, That's certainly not acting like an idiot, you know, and especially when my puppy pees, you know, my Rottweiler pees, wheezy, 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 did get, you know. And so I would praise the puppy in a normal voice. And, and for you, the, the same way that you talk to your girls, I would use real words, really good adjectives. And I would say to the puppy, that was wonderful. Oh, here's a treat. In fact, better than wonderful on planet wonderful on a wonderful day. And I would really get into praising the puppy with words in a normal manly voice. Followed by the treats, your praise words will then become secondary reinforcers, which will appear to the puppy, will be perceived as the equivalent to squeaks. But there's no need to squeak when praising. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, I, you're, I, to your point, Jesse, there's a lot of men or people, not necessarily just men, people that don't have that kind of affect or don't want to be jolly and squeaky. But, you know, to be fair, you know, the, the, tone does have an effect you know I mean you can train in a gruff you know hello and good dog but you know of course they they understand yay smiley face and celebrate yeah I just do a little celebration or to each his own I don't think there's a science on that one so yeah just, that's why I said use okay. words I didn't say don't be jolly no Jamie's is really good at being jolly I want you to be jolly and happy I just want uh, people to know you don't have to squeak when you're praising 
a dog um, any more than I have to squeak. We have to squeak now and say, oh, Jamie, you were good. Can you point that, 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 that? We just say, Jamie, that was, it was really good. It was well scripted. That's a nice pace. But with a puppy, if we said, good puppy, neutral voice, treat, 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 then just saying good puppy means three treats. It becomes a secondary reinforcer because it's hard enough getting the people to praise at all. And when you're watching men in class, especially with female trainers, and they say, can't you lighten up? Can't you raise your voice? No. So I think that's when we have to accommodate to a trainee in class and say, all right, you want to speak in a gruff voice. Here's so you make it meaningful to the puppy so the puppy knows you're joyously happy. But with Jamie, one thing he's good at, and one thing, one of many things he's good at one is day. expressing joy and, and dancing a jig and, and moving his, I mean, he did, did a little curry shimmy at one point, you know. But um, I, I still maintain you don't have to squeak to get the point across. I think it was fun makes... to watch. Don't get me wrong. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was cracking up and thinking, oh, this is, this is high humor. This is good. And I was thinking it will also be effective. This puppy will learn. I can imagine him talking to another dog through the fence saying, hey, it's amazing. I've learned how to make you know, my, my human person into a squeaky idiot. Watch this. <laughs> All I do is like watch, I pee and he goes, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that in the future, I would like to do some training with the puppy to, to do, um, you know, to get the puppy excited about a less overtly, you mm -hmm. know, squeaky voice. But I guess my thinking was initially on, especially these first few trips to the potty, I might as well use all the tricks that I have available to me, mm -hmm. especially when yeah. the puppy might not be super into treats. You know, I was like, hey, whatever the puppy wants, treats, play. And that was a, another thing that I was thinking about the X pen would be so useful is like, take the potty, take the puppy to the potty, put them in the X pen. And then when they've peed or pooped coming out of the X pen and that exploration can be a huge reward. You know, I think some puppies will, that will be more motivating than my squeaky voice or my treat. Yeah, and well, picking yeah. up the puppy oh. and giving it some treats. So now picking oh. up the puppy becomes a reward and hugs and a few little licks with its nice lips. You know? <laughs> but don't you worry, Dad, I'm gonna do some real gruff praise in a few training sessions. No, neutral. It doesn't have to be gruff, I say, but for some people they are gruff all the time. So we've got to turn that into a, a secondary reinforcer. But I think neutral, Phrase. And, and I love people who use real words like an adjective checklist and you say, this treat is because you were brilliant treat. This one, because it was wondrous watching you. And then, you know, the puppy will learn the way you deliver the speech is, that's what it will say. I, I love my Jamie. Puppy but will I get it. Take your point that, um, you know, this is not your puppy. This truly is the puppy next door. And so initially you have to make sure you're establishing the rapport, as we said in the earlier videos, that the puppy does take food from your hand. He loves it when you pick him up, when you reach for his collar. Uh, and so we have to be a little different because it's not our puppy. It's not been living with us. Yeah. Point taken. Any, any other part? To be thought? fair, um, yeah. one, of my, one of our instructors did actually contact me last week. You know, we just started back to in-person classes. And one of the instructors called me and said, how do I get this man to, to talk to in a, in a more, in a, in a happier way to his puppy, to reward his puppy for coming, you know? And so, and yeah. he's, he's one of those people that's come, you know, call me a puppy, you know? I have a great that exercise happens. for that. And I used to actually do it to Jamie when he was a, a baby. And I would read um, the Raiders articles to him. I would say, and then Kenny Stabler threw the ball to Freddy Beletnikov. And so all I want is for people to engage with their puppy. And so they can read the sports scores, you know, oh my word. Bucks oh, so you're su suggesting that that man finds something that he 
derives joy from. Yeah. Read about it to the puppy. Yeah, whether it's cycling, you know, whether it's sports or or whether it's uh, programming computers and you just talk to your puppy about it in a way that's intriguing. And, and when you deliver it lyrically, like you're say reciting nonsense poetry with pauses and you say, and so then if this is greater than that, we want the computer to do this. <laughs> Good. And the puppy will sit and cock his head. And that's the relationship being established. You, you just have yeah, to talk to your that. puppy. And he will learn, you know, in the family, there's a squeaker, there's a gruff talker, and there are kids who are all over the place. You know, the puppy will, but it will bond to everyone in the family. Yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate it as usual, both of you, your boundless wisdom. Thank you very much. Okay. I will definitely be getting an X pen for the backyard. This is how you should be praising the puppy. Boundless wisdom. <laughs> You've got to say to the puppy, oh, that was a good sit. Thank you for your boundless wisdom. Treat, treat, treat. Well done with your boundless bladder and bowels. <laughs> Hopefully there's, it's bounded. Hopefully it's bounded. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you too soon. I'm soon, yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. So now we have a little more constructive criticism to work with. I kind of expected this as it was pretty obvious that the leash was really not working well for taking Daisy to the potty. I'm going to work on getting an X pen that I can use to define her outdoor potty area, and hopefully that will work better. I'll also try to find a lighter leash. Honestly, though, I don't mind using a squeaky little voice to help praise Daisy especially for these first few successful trips to the potty. But in the future, I will work on praising Daisy with a more natural voice to demonstrate that you don't have to squeak to reward your pup. All right, with that in mind, let's get back to working with Daisy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in video four of day one. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.